So today I want to continue with the teachings on uh, spiritual awakening. So today I want to talk about simplicity. And this is a big part of uh, the spiritual path because we tend to complicate our lives so much these days. So simplicity can be broken down into three different areas. So simplicity of your room, simplicity of your schedule, and the important one, simplicity of your mind. So let's look at these three. So simplicity of your room. Over the years, we just build up clutter. We just do. You know, when you move into a place, you move in with four boxes, and a year later, if you moved out, you'd have 10 boxes, and you think, where did all this come from? So we just naturally do keep things. But our rooms are there for relaxation and connection, meeting people, friends and family. When your room is full of clutter, you can't relax. So you need to look around you. It's difficult, I know, but we need to spend time and look around and look at the things that we have in our rooms and ask ourselves, does this bring me value or does this bring me joy? Because if there's no value to you and it's no joy to you, but it's just been there and you always leave it there and it just collects dust, then it's time to let it go. The more we let go of the clutter in our lives, the more we can relax. It's like <sighs> when we get the clutter out. So it can be difficult for us. So what I would say is that you do a room at a time. Don't try to, that's it. After today, I'm going home and I'm going through every room and I'm going to clear out because that's impossible today. Pick a room and just pick certain time, 20 minutes, 30 minutes and start doing because it becomes easier. And you can, whatever you have, you can put into four categories. So these are the things I want to keep. These are the things I want to donate. These are for recycling. These are for throwing out. If you split them into those categories, then you can start donating things, getting them out, recycling, throwing things out. Then you're left with space. If you imagine your room is full of furniture and full of things, it's so hard to get round. And that is what you're doing to your mind. You're putting so many things in your mind that it's hard for you to think properly. So by simplifying our rooms, it gives us that space to relax, to breathe, to be more contented. Now, I know there are people who love collecting things. I have to say I'm the opposite. I throw things out and then think, oh, I might have needed that. But I don't like clutter. I don't like lots of things around. But I go to people's houses and there's old magazines and newspapers and broken furniture that they keep in just in case one day, who knows. All these things, and there's lots of ornaments that they've collected over the years. I never settle in a room like that, going into somebody's house, where it's open and spacious. It's so much easier to relax. So the first part of making your life more simple is to clear out all of that clutter, all of that waste, all the things you don't need in your life. If it is not giving you value and if it's not giving you joy, you don't need it. Yeah. And once you've cleared everything out, before you bring something new into your room, you need to ask yourself that question. Is this going to bring me value or is it going to bring me joy? Because again, if it isn't, don't bring it in because again, you'll just start your clutter. So simplifying your room is a great way to start simplifying your life. It's an easy way to start doing it. It's out of the three. That is the easiest to do.
uh, clear the, the clutter from your room. The second part is your schedule, and this is where it starts to become difficult. We seem to live in a world where busy is great. Everybody, oh, I'm so busy, I'm so busy. How come? You know, years ago, we didn't have such things as email and social media and WhatsApp. We, you know, we didn't have the opportunity to send a message. We'd have to have an old phone, that, and if the house didn't have a phone, you couldn't contact them. Or if they're further away, you used to have to write a letter. So now we have all of these things at our fingertips, and yet life has become fast, and it's become unbearable for us. It's okay not to do anything. In fact, it's not just okay. It is really important that you block. So you do time blocking. You block certain parts of your day where it's for you. You don't do anything. And it's not for you, oh, this is where I'll do my emails or this is where I'll look at social media. It is just blocked to do nothing. I block every morning till 10 o'clock. I make a point that I wake up 5.30 until 10. I just do my own thing. So I walk the dog, I do my practice, wash and dress and breakfast, and then 10 o'clock, start start doing teachings or whatever. But before 10 o'clock, I mean, you have to be uh, open. I mean, sometimes I have to do sessions for America or outside countries, so I have to do early. But my general rule is don't start till 10 o'clock. And then in the evening, do my last thing again by 8 o'clock, finish by 8 o'clock. So after 8, between 8 and 10 is my time. And between 5.30 and 10 in the morning is my time. It's blocked. And I don't want anything to interfere with that. That gives me the peace of mind then from 10 in the morning to late at night to do whatever I need to do. But I know that after 8 o'clock I can just relax. So we need to understand that we shouldn't be filling a whole time. A whole calendar doesn't need to be filled. It is okay to sit and do nothing. You know, we're in this sort of culture now where doing nothing seems to be that we're a nobody or we're lonely or nobody cares for us because my calendar isn't full. It isn't like that. You know, it's your life and you should be living it the way you want to live it. You should be looking at those times when you're filling your calendar and again asking yourself, is this in line with my values? Remember earlier on, a few weeks back, I did a teaching on setting ourselves boundaries. So if these things are outside our boundaries, then don't do them. If they're breaking your values, your ethics, your morals, don't do them. If you're doing them and you're getting absolutely no value from them, but you just think, oh, I'd better do them, don't do them. You don't have to. We don't have to be running around the whole time. We don't have to have a full calendar. It is okay just to have nothing to do. And it's okay to say, I've got nothing to do. But we're frightened of that. We want to say, oh, I'm so busy. You know, we are, there are times, of course, when we are busy. But, you know, to be honest, there are many times when we're not busy, and it's fine. I remember before I became a monk and I was living in London and working in London, every Monday morning when we went back to work, Ever, oh, what did you do over the weekend? Everybody's, oh, I did this, I did this. I was under pressure <laughs> to, to do something. I thought, my God, I can't, what can I say? I'll have to do something interesting. So sometimes I just did something interesting just so I could say, oh, yeah, I went here. But later on, as I got older, I thought, why are you doing that? It's okay just to say, actually, I had a quiet weekend. I got up late on Sunday just sat, read the newspapers all morning. How wonderful. 
But, you know, we were frightened in them days. I was frightened to say I'd done nothing. It is okay yeah, to not do anything. Think about it. If these things are not in line with your values and it's not giving you joy and happiness, then take it out of your schedule. You know, you need to also have a look at the information that you're putting your way. A lot of the time we are sitting looking at things on social media that we don't need to be taking on board. You know, we don't need to be filling our heads with information the whole time. There is such a thing as information overload where it puts so much pressure on us that then we start to worry about things that are happening on the other side of the world that we have no control over. It is okay to be compassionate and be empathetic and, you know, feel sorry for what's happening to people. But we don't need to get so involved in the whole thing when we can't do anything about it. I mean, if we can, then okay, good. But most of the time, the things we're looking at are just things that are just taking up our time, taking up our schedule. Find some time in the day for you. At least 15 to 30 minutes every day, you time. Just you. Nobody else. Now, I know people who have children and people who are caregivers, it's hard to do. But, you know, when the child is asleep, then do you time. And when the person you're caring for is having sleep, then do you time. Do something for you. Just sit, listen to music if you want to, read a book if you want to. You know, going out into nature, this is a great thing to do. So have a look at your schedule and understand that I don't need to be doing everything all at once. Also, this awful thing that came from uh, American business, which is multitasking, it's a ridiculous thing. Your brain can only focus on one thing at once. It can only do that. The brain has no other ability to multitask. It cannot do that at all. So the multitasking was just a way for getting one person to do three people's jobs. So then the company made more profit. That is the only reason for multitasking. Multitasking doesn't exist up here. And the more that you multitask, the more that you're putting pressure here. If you're trying to do five things at once, and I have to say, you girls are worse than anybody. You all think you can multitask. If you try to do five things at once, you can't give 500%. You can't be giving 100% to each of those five. There is no 500%. So it means that you're not being productive. You're not being creative and you're not doing anything properly to your full attention, and you're putting yourself under huge pressure. All of that because we like to think, I'm a multitasker. If I worked in HR and somebody came to me and said, oh, I'm a multitasker, I wouldn't employ them because they will burn out quickly. They'll burn themselves out trying to do this, this, and this. I know sometimes we can't, always finish off doing what we're doing but it's fine then to park it and now i'm focusing on this even if you're at work and you're focusing on something and the phone rings or somebody comes to you then okay i've parked that now my 100 percent is on what you are saying when that's finished now i'm back i focus on whatever i'm doing you are going to feel so much better and you're going to be more productive and more creative and your mind won't be exhausted. So many people at the end of a working day are emotionally and psychologically drained. They're burnt out. And why? Because they're trying to be everything. We can't do it. Your brain cannot do it. So simplify your life. Focus on what you are doing and focus on it well. If you can't finish it, then focus on the next thing. But don't try to focus on all things at once. It just doesn't work. You can't do it. So 
these are ways for us to start to simplify our life you know have a look is it something that fits in with my values and my ethics and morals and gives me joy if it is then it's okay to be in your calendar if it's not don't put it there if it takes it outside of your boundaries don't do it don't think that you have to be busy the whole time block time for you and don't try to multitask because that's not going to work so the third and final part of the simplifying your life is about cultivating a simple mind so again all of those things that i've just spoken about are making your mind complicated are putting your mind under pressure the more clutter and mess you have around you the more messy your mind is actually one job i had in london that i had a secretary and her desk was just awful and if you ask her something she, oh yeah i've got it here somewhere I said, oh my god and my desk was completely clear i have to have clear i like things to be in their place and clear then i can relax so if you're going to have clutter around it's going to affect your mind if you're going to try to fill every moment of your day it's going to affect your mind you need to have a simple mind you need to step back a little bit technology is going so fast i mean who knew that we'd be at ai already i mean we only just had mobile phones what 15 20 years ago and now look now we've got things that can think for us write for us do everything for us so technology is so fast it won't slow down so you have to slow down because we cannot keep up with technology if technology stopped today it would take millions of years for our brains to catch up with technology but of course technology is not going to stop it takes so long millions of years for our brains to evolve you know we still have the reptilian brain the brain we had when we were out there you know bashing other people on head with uh, bits of wood and everything and killing our own food and that we still have that brain and we don't need that brain right now but it takes evolution evolution so long you know we have this prefrontal cortex which is great for thinking planning creativeness but now we need another one on top so we need another lump here <laughs> for us to be able to deal with technology so but that lump is going to be a long time coming so don't don't wait for that i think we're going to miss that one so you know you have to slow your life down yourself and doing meditation every day is a great way of doing that particularly in the morning 10 to 20 minutes every morning start off like that start off calm okay there are going to be people who are going to knock you off course during the day or things are going to happen it's all about life isn't it but it's then you know these challenges are going to be there but how can we respond to them that's the important thing and if you start your day with meditation calm then your mind is open you're relaxed you're more patient you're more tolerant then you're going to be able to face up to those challenges if you start your day at a hundred miles an hour and you get out of bed and you're off and running then your whole day is going to be like that so start off calm just sit down do your practice meditate 10 20 minutes just sit watch the breath and then get on with your day it's a perfect way to start any day it's slowly even pranayam the breathing work and that are all good to start your day yoga is good to start your day start it off calm and peaceful and slowly allow yourself to drift into the day many people now just have their phone at the side of the bed stretch and wake up and pick it straight up and start looking but the phone straight away so what are you doing you're going from calm into a hundred miles an hour straight away you're looking at uh, 
all your messages you're looking at news items why don't do that just put it to one side meditate do whatever practice you want to do have your breakfast calm slowly and then look at it but don't pick it up don't have it by the side of your bed you know don't use it as your alarm clock keep it away so that temptation oh i can't reach it then that temptation is gone yeah every time you pick up that phone and you start looking and particularly when you're looking at like instagram and reels and things like that you're releasing dopamine so it's giving you that happy push but the bad side of dopamine is that we want more because once i've laughed at a reel i want to laugh at another one so then i'm skimming down another 20 till i can laugh again another bit of dopamine then i have to quickly rush down and have a, and then i laugh again and then another hour of my life is gone that i'll never get back all full of dopamine it's not good for us so don't look at your phone straight away start your day off slowly do meditation pranayam yoga or your breath works just calmly come into the day you'll feel so much better for that give yourself time to detox do that digital detox so i'm not saying turn your phones off i mean great if you can turn your phones off but look if you're up for one hour and you've not looked at your phone that's one hour of digital detox you've managed already if then you have your meals so half an hour breakfast half an hour lunch half an hour dinner that's one and a half hours don't look at your phone during meal time there's one and a half hours don't look at your phone an hour before you go to bed that's another hour so there's nearly four hours that you've detoxed and it's not difficult i mean it's not taking anything away from you it doesn't people say oh i need it for work yeah you may do but there's four hours that you can safely take away and detox every day so when you're thinking of digital detox don't think that you know i have to turn my phone off all day you don't just find times in the day and when i was talking about that me time about 15 minutes to half an hour each day just time for yourself don't look at the phone again that's another half an hour you've saved so we can save bits of uh, time during the day the more you do that the more you'll get into the habit of not keep picking that phone up don't have notifications on for everything i mean if it's work emails or something like that okay fine during work time but don't have it for you know somebody's posted their lunch on instagram who wants to see their lunch i mean i've seen so many people's lunches and breakfasts and dinners i mean i've seen food before i don't need to be looking at what people are eating so you know we need to look ourselves and detox throughout the day find time throughout the day journaling is another great thing to do if you can do that so it can be a full journal at the end of the day you can write it's not a diary so it's not i did this today i did this it's more about feelings i felt this today or this you know happened to me and i had this feeling had this emotion this behavior i need to look at this it's about that it's more about your mental state it's not about what i did today or if that's too difficult for you then do a gratitude journal and just look back over the day and write the things you're grateful for write one thing i was grateful for this situation i was grateful for this person i was grateful for this possession and i was grateful for myself for something just write those four each day one thing of each of those four things each day because by journaling it helps us to release you know when you talk about something or when you write something down it helps us to let it go when we keep things up here in the head they just become bigger and bigger and bigger and we just expand them and 
we just our imagination runs wild and we catastrophize and generalize and it's it becomes a huge thing when you put it down on paper you look at it it's not such a big thing or i can see a way out of it but when you leave things up in your head they're very difficult to deal with because they will just grow and grow so journaling is a great way for helping us to have a more simple mind so these are certain things that we can do to simplify our mind meditation mindfulness pranayam breath work all good things to start your day with being mindful throughout the day keep every now and again bringing yourself back to the present moment is going to help simplify your mind don't overdo things so don't you know bombard yourself with over information don't spend too much time on social media it's not good for us i see in certain places now in australia there's one state that have banned children from social media until after the age of 16 fantastic because our minds are just like sponges at that age and they're taking on things they're seeing things they shouldn't see you know you can't help it if you're on social media things pop up and you, oh my god i don't want to see that but you know once you've seen it you've seen it you can't unsee things so make sure that you do digital detox keep your calendars for yourself make sure you do what you want to do and not what you think other people expect you to do or what you think society expects you to do you do not need to be busy the whole time and unclutter your rooms because by doing that you'll unclutter your life and if you have a desk at work make sure it, at the end of the day you leave it tidy because when you come back that's the first thing you're going to see and if you see a big mess already your mind then is going off so make sure that you keep your desk tidy or you keep your workspace wherever it is tidy all those things are going to help you on the spiritual path because if your mind is calm peaceful simple relaxed you're going to keep on that spiritual path if your mind is a clutter and your room is cluttered and your whole schedule is cluttered then what time what room do we have for the spiritual path we don't so living a more simplistic life you see people misunderstand the simplistic life they think the simplistic life means selling everything and living in a you know tarpaulin outside somewhere and you know not having running water or electricity yeah, you can do that if you want to but it's not about that it's more about what you have around you how you deal with your schedule and how you simplify your life your brain your mind they are the key points of simplicity so you can keep driving your car living in your house but you need to make it as simple as possible <laughs>